Yeah, come on, explain. You explain it the way you are going to explain to the audience. The familiarity trap comes from the familiarity we have with uh, another person or idea or surroundings or whatever um, we are talking about, basically. So if we are familiar with a person, for instance, over a period of time, we like uh, we will tend to take him for granted. That's what happens in most of the marriages or between the friendships or even with ourselves. We are familiar with ourselves for, for a long time. So all of our abilities, our thinking process, our upbringing, everything we take for granted. So it will be very difficult to change our perceptions and also to value whatever is worth in us or in the other person. So it that's it like it can work in two ways. Um, too, too much familiarity leads to contempt. That is the marriage relationship which we always can see after quite a few years. Um, it is very hard to understand that person with a fresh eye because all the all their behaviors, responses, and attributes, everything is known to us. And probably there is nothing to talk also after many years. And uh, in terms of friendship also, if, uh, if two people are friends for a long time, and uh, it is very, um, it will be very difficult to see that person with all their, um, all their originalities, like what we will see what we always have seen or what we want to see. So, and the, like with us, for instance, if you are a student and um, you are familiar with yourself and your surroundings, it will be hard for you to see anything new in yourself or see anything new in your friendship. So which will be kind of blocking to get the totality of the other person or the other surrounding, other other situations. Hmm. Not okay. Okay, sir. Okay, what is the trap? Define <laughs> the trap, explain the trap. What is the referent of familiarity? Familiarity is you know something too much. Hmm. You are so, uh, close so with somebody. With yeah. close so you know years. something too much. Oh, all right. Yeah. Or you yeah. know something too much. You see a thing always. Yeah. You hear about something all the time. You yes. touch a thing all the time. You behave with a thing all the time. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, look at it in that sense, okay? Yes. That is called that is the that is what is called familiarity. Mm -hmm. Always uh, define that concept. You write down even the yep. dictionary meaning. What is familiarity? That's a word which many people may be familiar. They might have taken even the word familiarity for granted. Yes. Okay. So redefine that concept. Familiarity. All right. Yeah. So it can be even with the objects, it can be with the systems, it can be about the processes, it can be about activities, it can be about uh, uh, relationships, it can be about ways of doing things, it can be about the ways of language. Yes. So you remember okay. that uh, five components of human manifestation, Nitya, you are not interrelating many things we told. I don't know whether Nitya was present on day, I told you about the five basic components or five basic spokes of manifestation of a human entity. Expressions. One. Uh, yeah, one. There is responses, expression. Yeah. Responses. Hmm. Uh, uh, behaviors. Hmm. Language. No, no. Go in that sequence. 
go in the sequence of development, more or less the development in the child. First, there is the expressions in the child that will help you remember that. Mm -hmm. Then the child evolves into a little more detailed range of expressions called responses. Then the expressions thing. plus responses plus ways of uh, 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 relating with the environment called behavior. Then comes actions, actions like including actions, taking yeah. a spoon to dressing up and uh, which will later become the competences of work. Yes. Which many parents do not allow the children to do. And then ways of relating with people. That's, that's the most critical. In fact, for like a language is the most critical ways of relating with people also is equally critical. What makes a leader a leader, a real leader? I'm not talking about appointed leaders. Relating with people. Yeah. Maybe. yeah. And that there is a way of relating with people. They, everybody has a way, of course. But uh, they do not uh, inspect, they do not critically, creatively analyze their ways of behavior, so, sorry, relationship with people. It is inevitable that if you live with a man for 13 years or 14 years, you will become extremely familiar with him. There is nothing new in him. Nitya, you always use the example that uh, if you are uh, familiar with a friend for 20 years, you may not see originality in him. He may not have any originality, so you cannot see that. Hmm. So the thing is, that person is very familiar. But uh, you can maintain that way of relating. The husband, the wife's body, wife's behaviors, wife's expressions, they are all familiar, no doubt. But you can still maintain, you can still sustain the way of relating with her. Still you can talk to her, ask her, okay, what are the food today? Uh, ask, ask about that, what were you doing today? How was the day today? What was your work today? So long as she is also in the mood to answer to you. What do you think about that film? So, uh, so maintain the same way of relating with her, the way you related with her the first week. So long as she is accessible to that. So long as she is open to that. She may not be perhaps interested in that kind of questions. Then find out. So even if you do not express, keep that way of relating with her. That way should not be affected. That's all. Because uh, most of the familiar things are familiar. Oh. You cannot uh, get, get detached from the available familiarity that happened to your system, which is not your creation. It is a natural, spontaneous consequence of the system to get familiarized with everything. Because that's a survival requirement. Because every time if you have to learn something again and again, then it is very difficult. You are already familiar with your driving, with your car. You know how your car would behave. So that is good. But your way of behaving in the car should be the same way as it was when you used it in the first week. Yeah. You can see a lot of people. They have a bike in the first week or second week or first, uh, first year. They uh, dust it, they wash it, they take care of it, they look at it. Blah, blah, blah. After that, it is gone. And then they buy a new bike. So, whether you sell it to tomorrow or today, the way of relationship, that is your quality. That person may have changed. The bike has changed. Definitely there will be wear and tear. Okay? But your way has not changed. That is the state of being of what we call a genius in self. We are not, mind you, we are not talking about genius in physics or mathematics. We are talking about genius in existential process. Right. Which involves your language, which involves your ways of relating with people, which involves the way you do a thing, which involves the way you behave with people, which involves the way you respond to people, which involves the way you express yourself to other people. On one side, of course, I like to point Nitya pointed out, at a second dimension, be a little more systematic. And the second dimension, as you pointed out, if you, if you have the tendency to take familiar things uh, granted and uh, undermine it and underestimate it and uh, behave improperly with it, the most familiar thing for everyone is the oneself, one's own self. There, your point is valid, Nitya. The possible, probable originalities for that inner being are never noticed.
there must have been moments differently in the mind of Nitya. So, okay, one day I will uh, change my name or I will ask people, uh, so please call me Nitya. I am sure at least once you had that moment. But you did not care. For example. So, the originality and uh, all that of identifying that of other people, forget it. That can happen within you. You must be aware. Others, how will you know when you are becoming, uh, when you when you make a major shift in perspective about yourself as a as a as a real wonderful human being, which is the purpose of this program. Yes, sir. Unless you are a wonderful being and absolutely confident in that wonderfulness of you as a secret agreement between your consciousness and your self-image, how will you train other people to become wonderful? Then only you can train. Otherwise, you'll be giving talks, like the modern gurus are doing talks for hours together about Upanishads and Vedantas and Porting Krishna and Arjuna and Buddha and all those things. That talk will not make anybody any difference. Understand that. But when you are really wonderful, you will have a different way of pointing out uh, uh, the referent and the referent reality of the difference of somebody. When you are uh, in tune with that, your own your relationship with your own self will be varying. That is more important in today's world. Because uh, whether you want it or not, it is very likely that uh, in the coming future, individuals would end up living a lonely life. Even with a very sweet wife or sweet husband. Primarily, we are all alone. At least you will make a lonely journey. At that time, you will need your originality. I will tell you just an example that happened very yesterday to me. Night 9.45, I landed uh, in Coimbatore Airport. I came down the stairs and then I saw a queue at the, at the, uh, at the there's a gate inside, inside the platform itself. So inside the airport, before the main uh, exit gate. And there I saw police people and uh, I saw a queue there. It's 21.30. Then I was wondering what is a queue there? Reaching there, I saw two people uh, standing there uh, on one side of the what you call ga galley, and on the other side, two three police people. And these two people were asking everybody, "Do you have a vaccination certificate or a certificate of having done RTPs there two days back, within two days?" And uh, a lot of them showed their what you call mobile phone with the vaccination certificate or something like that. And two, one guy standing uh, there, he was a little bit wild and he was calling somebody over telephone and uh, saying that now they are saying, nobody told that you need a vaccination certificate to enter Coimbatore and they are asking now what to do, etc. Somebody was shouting at somebody and there was a kind of a commotion. And uh, then there is another two people sitting there with some form, some form to fill in the details. Because those who have not taken the vaccination or not taken the artificial, they have to fill in a huge form. And then there is another table where two apparently doctor looking people with some uh, test tube, some kind of a blue colored liquid and uh, uh, that I think that swab or whatever I think, they are sitting there. Huh. There is no question, I will not do vaccination. I will not take the so-called bloody artificial either. I wondered. I looked at the situation. Yeah. And they are asking somebody, no, 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 you cannot go. That's the government rule. It is a, a government order. You just cannot go without uh, doing this test. And uh, one guy was talking to that guy, and the other guy was just uh, standing there. I told the other guy suddenly, you know, I have to go to a place where there are a lot of elephants. Let me go. He instantly said, you go. And I quickly vanished. <laughs> what I did, I put in a different context. Mm -hmm. Suddenly his mindset was about that because he knew that uh, uh, in Coimbatore area there are elephants running around by night 11 o'clock. I said, I am from an area where there are a lot of elephants already. It is 10.30. I have to reach there. Instantly he said, okay, you go. 
I don't know why he told me. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, this is what happened to me. Okay. I was utterly, really confused. Because I would not like to take a vaccination. And I would not go and uh, do all these things. Because I know all these are... Uh, uh, anyway, I, anyway, I don't. So what I'm talking is, that is also very important in this context. That also you have to say. Much more critically, taking other people for granted, you can let somebody do it. Let everybody in the world take everybody else for granted. Let them take their father for granted, mother for granted, wife for granted, husband for granted, friend for granted, organization where they're working for granted. Okay. But ask them a question. Would you like to take the you for granted? Who are you? You are the one who believes that you are a creation of the so-called God. You are the one who goes to the temple and pray. What do you do to you? Have you read any wonderful books? Have you learned any new art? Have you tried to sing a song in your life? Have you tried to do a painting in your whole life? Have you tried to write four lines of poetry in your whole life? Have you played a game in all your life? How you behaved beautifully with somebody else? How you had uh, moments of feeling wonderful about you? These are more critical. Are you ill? Ask that question. What about your body? Is your body impeccable? When every cat on the road is able to maintain its health, what about your health? Ask that question. Do you get affected easily by anger and hatred and all those things? You only know that only your God or your Guru says that anger and hatred and animosity and unethical practices are bad and you go and listen to that so-called Guru. And what about you? Okay? Nitya? Yes, sir. Go to this level. So, man, mentioned about the familiarity trap, especially mm -hmm. in the context of marital relationship, because most of your audience are going to be like that. And marital relationship is the fundamental. Because finally you come back to your home. And most men and women I am telling today, they are pretending. Let them be original, okay? It does not mean that you go and all the time talk or sweet nothings to them. No. Because everybody can intuitively know how the other person is treating me. You don't have to talk a single word over a period of two years. But he can know or she can know. By your look, just a look from your eyes can convey her. Especially a female can easily know. Make one or two comments about her sari, about her dressing. So, just like that, uh, give this also. That's the way you do not take your wife for granted. So is with your children. Those parents who are overprotecting the children, actually they are taking for granted the most wonderful being in the world. Ask them. If your CEO has brought his child, a uh, 13 year old boy, uh, and tells you, please take care of him for about two months, how will you do that? Mm. Yeah, you will be very careful. You will be very careful in what you talk, what how you behave, and all that, okay? Or if the crown prince is under your care, how will you do? No, no, no. That's all. And you take your child for granted and you can do whatever bloody, whatever nonsense you feel and you talk whatever nonsense and you behave whatever nonsense and you behave. You talk wonderful things to the child and you behave. You are a poor model. That's what the child observes. Child will not learn what you talk and write an examination and get A+. Plus. Child is ever sensitive to every expression of the father and the mother. 
That is where the end number of parents in the world is doing a terrible mistake. They think that they talk a wonderful thing and therefore the child will become wonderful. And familiarity is the word. Tell everybody, every one of the audience to love whatever they have. Whether it is a pen or a bike or a car or a house or a table or a chair or, or dress, whatever it is. Because there are millions of people who do not have a pen or pencil or one-time food. That is why, at least. Give them beautiful logic why they should love everything they have. Tell them to really listen to their priest in the church when they give a deliver, deliver a talk about the Bible and uh, Jesus. They are taking it for granted because they hear it every Sunday. Tell them that they are taking their own greatest ideologies for granted, Nitya. All of them know what to call Karmani Vadhigara say Mahafali Sukatajana. They all know what Krishna said, what uh, Ramayana says, what Bhagavadam says. They all know. Every Christian knows what the critical things of Bible. They are taking it for granted. They just pretend that they know that. That's all. This is the uh, this is the consequence of familiarity trap, uh, Nithya. Yes, sir. Uh, don't you think that this is very critically important for the world? It is. Of course. Definitely, yes. Forget, forget about fear of unknown and anxiety, etc. Yes. Forget about sensitivity conformity. They are all about uh, higher order creativity. But familiarity trap and uh, speed trap and self-importance trap are uh, very, very, very extremely relevant in every detail of life and work and relationships. I was thinking about myself as well while doing this because yeah. if, yeah, if I, I mean, no, I can see. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is much more than this. You just yes. give a tip of the. Can we give uh, uh, Newton finding for falling the apple as an beautiful, example? Beautiful, beautiful. Give that. Yeah. And now you know what to sum that with. Yeah. But that's all very higher order example. And to begin with, you can say that, but uh, with Visavi, these three traps bring them to the reality, rougher and the reality of their ongoing life. Mm. Yeah. Their ongoing life, work, relationships, language, huh? Visavi, the other people, and secondly, and most critically, about their own self. So the way of relating yep. is the more yeah. critical one. Just a minute, yeah. we will come back to that. Yeah. And I am very sure most likely all your audience are potentially working somewhere, employees. Uh, no, sir. These are students. Oh, students. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. okay. Yeah. How, yeah. how many of them really are genuinely inspired about learning? Mm. They are all looking for techniques. They are waiting for opportunity to copy and write the examinations. What more example is required for taking it for granted? Do they ever try to understand that subject? Do they really respect and appreciate the teacher? Every student of today's world is taking their teachers for granted, taking their institutions for granted, taking their classmates for granted. True. Taking even their books for granted.
Why? Because there are, why? Familiarity means what? Everywhere it is available. In the past, there were only one or two, three colleges, one or two, three schools. So being a student in a college or a school was a feeling of pride. Even. Now, everybody is going to school, everybody is a graduate, everybody is, so they do not feel. They don't realize that they are, every one of them is the only one in the whole world. Okay? They all have a statistical perception of their own self. There are so many schools, this is one of the schools. There are anyway, a number of students are in class 10 or engineering or whatever it is. I have also one of them. So they don't feel inspired to become an engineering student. If, if, if the, their college was the only one college in the state, what would be their feeling? So, it is for you, because that is your specialty. A rose is a rose is a rose. Whether in a good school or a bad school or a great school. That's all. Yeah, yes, Vina, what was your point? I was thinking about the way of relating with uh, people. Uh, with that, check you said about the new car. After some time, you start uh, being disrespectful or uh, behave with that in a damaging way. That the car gets spoiled. Like what happens with uh, global warming or climate change and all this. Oh, that's all much, much wonderful topic, Vina. We are not going to that now. Now the purpose is to give Nitya much more oh, yeah, close. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. We will come to this mindset at a later point of time after variant invariant analysis. Because mm -hmm. because these are the because I am convinced and I am sure nobody in the world can uh, uh, debate with me if I say that the wonder of the human beings is pre prevented only by these mindsets. What else? Let them say. The wonder of existence is uh, raped by the uh, familiarity trap induced by the environment. Definitely. The governments are taking people for granted. Organizations are taking people for granted. Religions are taking people for granted. The traders are taking people for granted. The fathers are taking the entire family for granted. Husbands are taking wives for granted. Wives are taking husbands for granted. Both of them are taking children for granted. Then what is important in life? Nobody really knows. Okay, bank balance. For what? Okay, money is important, definitely. But what that money is for? If it is not for a beautiful life, okay? Yes. Not able to behave uh, uh, even decently with one's own husband or wife. The husband is the CEO. Husband is the uh, topmost entrepreneur in the country. So what? Ah, that let them do. Veena, we often end up into this kind of discussion. Let them go to hell, Veena. We are talking about uh, you eight, uh, 9, 10, 11 people. We are talking about the perspectives and the philosophies and the uh, uh, various competencies you have to uh, imbibe and uh, get inspired about so that uh, you will uh, uh, open the eyes of uh, at least one or two, three people who come to you. That's all. And finally, as Nitya pointed out, how you are going to evolve yourself? To what extent you are uh, getting out of the trap of taking your own self for granted? That is the question. So eating food for eating food or savina, for example. I was uh, thinking in uh, two ways, you know, once you say karma nevadika and all those things are repeat every day, it becomes insignificant and I'm not bothered about its meaning anymore. I just repeat it. There is no harm done anyway. But with respect to way of relating to people, 
mm-hmm. the environment familiarity plus the way you disregard and be injurious to the environment that is a different aspect yeah of course by familiarity itself uh, being familiar uh, nothing i mean you lose that our first uh, way of looking at it you change your way of looking at it become familiar with that But that is the second aspect also you have mentioned there yeah. familiarity leads to taken for granted attitude yes. or contempt yes. that is the next level yes 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 that is the next serious level yes yes that's what is happening mostly yeah. Yeah. with the in relation to the nature and injury injuring the yes. nature yes yes this role it should be topics to be delivered to the entire world but uh, that uh, will not will never happen that's a different issue okay we have much more discussions and uh, uh, about the various uh, expressions or uh, uh, manifestations of this sumarakya tra and we have to also think about the appropriate languages by which we can liberate people from the mental trap of familiarity because because of that familiarity trap only the beauty and wonder of life is gone so they are all expecting beauty and wonder where they are all searching for happiness they are not able to feel happy because uh, that is the ultimate thing also nitya this also you can mention yep. people are just not able to feel consistent level of happiness uh, that minimum level of happiness because of this familiarity trap and familiarity trap only I told you, when children are victims of familiarity trap, they are not able to feel the wonder of life. Wonder, that is the most critical requirement for human intellect, human mind. Wonder. People are not able to feel the wonder of life. They go to Himalayas, they go to Niagara uh, to get a, what you call, trance and... Uh, a sort of uh, two pecks of wonder and then they come back again deceived and uh, disillusioned wonder is by your direct in, uh, relating with the referent and referent realities of everything around with everything around whatever is around if you if you are living in a dull mechanical city apartments uh, uh, at least have a small plan in a small what you call uh, what you call flower waves uh, whatever not flower waves what is it called flower pot or whatever and keep it in your room if there is no balcony and look at that plan and feel the wonder of the universe operating there manifested there symbolically represented there and it can be definitely triggered that wonder is lost you know by yes, familiarity sir. trap yes yeah go to the next one next trap means uh, and yeah and this is the most critical spend uh, about uh, 50% of the time on familiarity trap alone and think about the uh, relevant examples or relevant pointers uh, to invite the attention of the students okay sir hmm. depending upon their background and uh, the way familiarity trap operates in their very work this i talk to most of the managers how did they look at their work in the first uh, month of their appointment what was their feeling when they got the appointment order what was their feeling in the first day and the first week in the first month after one year then uh, what okay work is familiar 
people are familiar, office is familiar. They just come and go just for the money. That's all. And when there is some important discussion, they will just go and sit in the board. That's all. If something comes to their mind, they may say otherwise nothing. No original decision happens in the end number of discussion meetings in the Indian companies. Evidenced by the performance of these companies. How can? Because uh, that looking things uh, from different vantage points is the capacity. They don't have it. Then how can they, 10 o'clock there is a meeting, suddenly they will put the first gear of originality and creativity and then they will talk about it and then they lose that gear. No. It is a state of uh, uh, engines of the mind and the spirit and the intellect. You cannot be original between 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock. You can have knowledge, repeat, reproducing what you already know and uh, redoing what you already do. That's all. The originality, they lose their gratitude to life. Gratitude to institution, gratitude to their teachers, gratitude to their books, gratitude to their own knowledge. Even the knowledge is taken for granted. For example, Nitya. Yes, sir. Because all kinds of bloody knowledge is available in the internet. You people know about a, a five, uh, fifth standard guy talks about black holes and the galaxies and what you call satellites and internet and blah, blah, blah. So there is an illusion that... Uh, 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 he knows something, and uh, a so called ego is rigidly developed and formed. So they think they know. They don't even know how to behave with a, a colleague. They don't know how to respect their female colleagues. I'm talking about men. I don't know how the female treat their colleagues. Here it is worse, sir. Here the females are more or oriented. They are gamers. Rather, we are gamers. More gamers. <laughs> yeah, self-importance, of course. Self-importance and oh. speed. That is the... Uh, that is the major, what you call it in Malayala, Mukha Mudra. The, mm. the, 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 the most dominant uh, internal expression and often manifested externally. I am the most important in the world. It can also cause depression when they are not feeling that way. Beautiful. Once Beautiful. That, Beautiful that, point, uh, which you, you yeah. may have to explain to people. Yeah, like they um, exactly. They don't realize that the so-called depression and uh, worry and all mm -hmm. is a direct consequence of self-importance. Who am I? Why should I? A lot of people say, even the films and the media, we can say, why it happened to me? Who are you? Huh? Anything can happen to anybody. Then who are you? People don't like criticisms. In today's world, even children, they don't like criticisms. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And especially is... in the Western world, the schools and up to the college, they are encouraged at each step. Um, it is kind of reverse from what you said. Like, if they are writing two lines of poem, most of the teachers are encouraging, oh, this is wonderful, wonderful, and they get a certificate and all in um, lower levels. And if they don't continuously get it after the college, then suddenly they feel a vacuum. Mm. So, for instance, this boy that um, committed suicide last week, mm -hmm. he was a topper. He was a 99% uh, uh, school Finish. finalist. And then uh, he was also select. He was also a good cricket player. And then people are now thinking that he committed suicide because he didn't get a selection to the state team. So there was no other reason for him to take such a drastic action. And there was not even a fan in the room where he hung his, himself. So he he took his um, intelligence to devise something how 
he can end his life uh, rather than managing his emotion at that time and uh, move on with that simple um rejection from the selection team so that's what yeah. <laughs> high self importance can do and with the speed um to learn anything properly we have to and, spend uh, uh, now wait wait what do you what is the correlation between self importance and uh, familiarity trap they are related or totally unrelated it is also related of course yes this is a trap which serve certain specific domains of its manifestation <coughs> by taking things for granted there is an indirect that. evolution of that self importance yes so he has That's taken i mean people can take themselves for granted at that higher order and attributing their abilities to enhance their self importance and then suddenly something happens then the balance is shifted which they are not able to manage basically yeah So could you and explain that familiarity trap and self importance once again? You're asking me. Yes, yes. The the linkages between them. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, it's only an indirect linkage, uh, you know, you know. Because a lot of people take a lot of things for granted, not necessarily because uh, they have self importance in the sense which we tend to perceive it at the peripheral level. self importance is mostly revealed in the context for example when you try to change somebody for example when you try to guide somebody when you try to uh, 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 offer a little bit of criticism to somebody criticism means you unless without that critical criticizing kind of uh, uh, language syntax it is very difficult to uh, enable a shift in perspective so these are all rejected not, not need not be openly it's but there is an internal rejection that is the root of self importance so you may see even a beggar has that level of self importance there is a sanskrit word for this that is ahanda it is different from ahankara it is not egoism a highly egoist looking person may not have any self importance it's just a way of his behavior so that it is that internal perception that uh, uh, you know no 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 i am not that you know i am this i am pure at heart i am this that etc that is the self importance here now the self importance is after all a kind of a concept to use importance meaning he doesn't give any importance in the sense of importance at all it is to refer to a kind of a blindness that i am impeccable i am beyond uh, all these things without any achievement without anything advantages uh, or anything good still he believes or that person believes that uh, i have i have something um, uh, solid inside you know even a criminal has that uh, self inside him So I am beyond all these things. I am at the core. I am, I am this. I am that, etc. Okay, I told this lie. I committed this crime. I do this manipulation. I do this uh, uh, all kinds of evil practices in my business or in my official work. But uh, at the deeper self, I am kind of an impeccable spirit, and they maintain that self by uh, secret uh, prayer to the god or uh, secret uh, rituals and uh, things like that. They derive, uh, uh, sometimes they derive that self-importance by having certain kind of uh, group activity, like joining Lions Club or uh, Rotary Club and such uh, associations and all that. Then, uh, then at the uh, uh, next orbit, you know, to manifest that self-importance, uh, he may change the models of his car. In fact, what these advertising guys are doing, I used to say, uh, some time back. that the rich the rich people are easily cheated by the businesses 
you add just a, an additional wiper on the back windscreen and you charge you 25,000 extra for that car. <laughs> okay. So, what is the difference between S class and the A class Benz, whatever it is? But uh, a little bit additions here and there, and the cost is that much. So, I have this car, I have, the, I have a Ferrari, I have a Mercedes Benz, I have a this, that, etc. That is called self importance. But he may look very humble and so on and so forth. That is a problem within him. But uh, most of the time, uh, there are manifestations of that self importance, especially in employment. You can see it in public sector companies and government offices. The so called IAS guy. They are impeccable. They, nobody can question him. They are all uh, direct agents of somebody, you know. So uh, that is also a manifestation of self importance. That uh, happens only when they are in the, for example, offices. They will talk any nonsense with the driver, they behave anyway, but uh, they, they, they are ca easily capable of doing that. That's also, uh, that's an external manifestation of self-importance. I am the CEO of the company. So, he feels that and he pretends like that. He can be very cool. He is already a CEO. Then why should he show that also? Why should he restrict himself or why should he prevent somebody or why should he control his genuine feelings to other people? That also is a manifestation of such importance to you know. In India, for example, one of the most easily understandable manifestations of self importance is the self importance of the so called upper caste. The topmost caste feel more important than the next lower level. They feel more important than the next lower level, and so on. But they may be behaving, perhaps they may be behaving friendly and things like that. But you can see the nuances, the expressions of that self-importance to them, which has no grounding. That's what is the problem. Then again, self-importance. I sat in the front row of Sat Sai Baba's discourse. So they pay an additional five lakh to get the front seat to, to, uh, to listen to the discourse of uh, a so-called well-known master. So wherever the, uh, because that is, uh, now you got it, you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sir, I have a doubt. And what uh, Nitya said is a very psychological factor. A lot of people think that the, those who commit suicide are poor people, etc., etc. They are very arrogant people. I mean, they are arrogant in sense. So they are crowning examples of self-importance. Why it should happen to me? Why I should fail? Why this girl should reject me? A lot of people commit suicide by love, failure in love, for example. I did not expect my life to be like this. A lot of people I have heard, it can be even heard in the uh, dialogues of uh, characters in the film. So, there are also uh, elements of expressions of self-importance. You know. They are not ready to change, that's all. I am very important. Therefore, uh, unless you unless you face criticism or unless you face guidelines of correction, how can improvement is ever possible? It is because of the self-importance that happened to, for example, I am just saying for example, I am very careful. In the past, the husband was the king. I mean, husband says, wife simply agrees. That's all. When the father says, just agreed. Now, there is a so-called liberalized philosophy, individual individuality. So the wife thinks, uh, who are you to tell me that? So new, new avenues of uh, self-importance uh, uh, have happened uh, over a period of time. So if two people are equally controlling a game, how can it go smoothly? 
So females were asking for their liberation. They are also equally important. Okay, wonderful. Now what is happening as a result? Man was dominating. It was not man dominating. That's the way culturally it happened. That's all. In fact, the dominating husband, if you look at the psychology of families, in the past, the so-called dominating husband was very loving and taking, used to take care of the wife. He may shout at her, he may once in a while even beat her, but he was very careful. He protected her. And now, actually, most of the husbands are really not bothered at all about such a so-called liberated female. It is not possible. So, the female self-importance is uh, elevated by very artificial, illusory ways by certain modern philosophies and perspectives of the West. In fact, if you look at the West, West is the place where females are really taken for granted, which they don't realize. In the history of India, females were really respected and treated. Okay, in some homes there may be some quarrels and some underestimating dialogues, etc. But there was no divorce. Children lived happily. They just knew our father and mother. Sometimes they quarrel, that's all. Children were very cool about that. Now children are all affected. Because they can easily know. They are very highly sensitive, more than little children especially. They are very sensitive. Father and mother, they are not quarreling at all. But they can easily see the real discord between the father and mother. So, uh, two, two leaders cannot be there for a single organization. One has, uh, so, I am just giving an example of uh, self-importance. And again, as, uh, to keep the line of Nitya, by, by the, uh, that what is called fear of failure, many other mental blocks are also due to self-importance. Uh, who am I to fail? In order to maintain self-importance only, I don't try to do the un strange and the ambiguous, you know, because if I, do, if I don't do it properly, it is a shame for me. Yes. Or it is something not uh, okay with my so-called secret self-image. Yeah. This person is a nobody. Still, they have that self-image. Get the point, Vina. Yes. This person is a nobody. But still, he doesn't try anything new. Because if I try that, I may not be able to do. Yeah. So that is confidence yeah. in self is opposite of this. Yeah, of course. It's really so smart here as well. So, Ashwati was asking a question before. Yeah, I did not uh, hear that. What is that, Ashwati? Sir, I was uh, thinking, you also said the ways of relating with oneself should be uh, with uh, great uh, care and importance and not taking for granted. Yeah, yeah uh, good point. Good point. No. Yeah. So then, in the then, are we not giving yeah. importance? Yeah, and that's also importance, but that's a different level of importance. Because that is like you give importance to a, a pen, so you take care of it. You give importance to a deity inside your puja room. You want it to be good, neatly kept, uh, uh, and uh, you appreciate it. You will keep your wonder about it. That is the importance which we talked about in terms of your that. Uh, Self in you. So, so when that, uh, when that self, so, suppose uh, we have not achieved anything very exceptionally great, but there we feel wonderful. But you said even the person who has not done anything before, that person is feeling self-important. Anything, yeah, anything meaning, not, uh, I have not done his studies very well, he is not working anywhere, he has no good job, he has no other, any other performance. I mean, I'm talking about a guy on the road, a market guy on the road, a fisherman, 
somebody, you know, a guy in the marketplace. That kind of a guy who has not done anything significantly. You enter into a dialogue with the market guy, you will know what is self-importance. That is the negative self-importance which you talk about. You go to any government office and stand there, then you will know what is self-importance in this block level. He will not exactly, even sir. look at you. He will not even look at you. For right, example, yes. for yesterday another thing happened. For yesterday, you know, <laughs> one day, uh, some one two years back, uh, Indigo uh, that people the what you call air hostess came and distributed a small book, uh, calling some passport or something like that. Mandra, take that book. Mandra, Mandra, take that passport book from my bag in the lower. There, there, in that, in that cabin, in the lower cabin of the bag, in the top. Yeah. Lower cabin is that? It is not there. It is something like this. Okay? Uh -huh. This was distributed a year back. So, in that, uh, you can get the autograph of the pilots. Okay? Pilots. So, you can see uh, my book is almost full. Because I found that as a pleasure, you know. Like a uh -huh. little boy, uh -huh. I enjoyed the wonder of it. Nice. I enjoyed the wonder of it. And uh, uh, some of the pilots have responded so beautifully. I will show mm -hmm. you a page, for instance. See, a page. I can't read properly, One sir. Pilot. Yeah. Not visible, sir. Oh, yeah. All right. You know, this is, this I just to give you as an example of, uh, let me say, uh, my, my, my lack of self-importance. My lack of self-importance meaning, I don't, I am almost a boy. I don't, I'm a big man, I am this and that. I enjoy even this. This was meant actually for children. Actually. Right, sir, great. So, uh, this book for example, uh, see, one page. <laughs> yeah, good. Sir. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sir, exactly. They're by different pilots. Uh -huh. I don't mind waiting there, and uh, every time I went there, mm -hmm. this was uh, the signature of at least some 30, 35 pilots. Every time I go there, when I say this, the air hostesses would look at me with uh, sometimes an <laughs> obvious feeling of, ah, what is this kind of a thing, okay? <laughs> then, they, when they see the book, they have to do it, because this is given by them only, their company only. Okay, what is that? Mm -hmm. Indigo, Indigo passport. passport. Indi Indigo passport, yeah. I know that it is a gimmick. I know that I am, I know it is a gimmick. But I don't take it as a gimmick. This is an evidence of lack of self-importance, you know, for instance. Now, I will tell you yesterday what happened. So, mm -hmm. I, uh, of course, it is a last flight. Air hostess must be tired, both of them. Then I went there, you know, and they looked at it and they obviously showed uh, an expression of scorn, S-C-R-O-N. Oh, yeah, yeah. This guy, this uh, elderly <laughs> guy who is coming and showing it. And I said, please give it to the pilot. And she was not even ready. And then oh, the other girl took it and went inside. And that pilot has written something so beautiful. Uh -huh. So, because he said that level. But these air hostesses, who has more self-importance? Air hostesses. Air hostesses. If I was a young, handsome guy, <laughs> what would have been their way of relating? It's a very good example, sir. Right. But the pilot is a pilot is a pilot. I understand that. Mm -hmm.
What has he written there? So I about pilot, that. what did he write? It's so self important so that ladies. What has the yes, pilot written pilot. there, sir? What has he written there? If you do not have any self importance, you will relate with everyone in one to one way, Vina. I relate with the Rangan the way I relate with uh, Professor Rangit, I mean, the, uh, who was there. Of course, I may not be talking theories. I talk only what he can and what he uh, what his domain is. Sir, I have seen it. How you first time when you interact with him. Which every one of you must uh, uh, get rid of uh, forever. Yesterday, from my Patna to Delhi flight, uh, there was a girl sitting next to me. I understood her difference just by one small moment. I was reaching to that level, that what you call seat. It was three a or something like that. As I reached that three, she looked at me and she stood up and uh, came out of the seat to give me a seat. Okay, I just entered there. And even before sitting, she came and I asked her, even before, I never entered into a dialogue like that. I asked her a question. Can you say what the question was? If you have seen the referent reality of what I described in those English words. Yeah, how does she know that you are going to 3A? What you I are asked, the passenger why I for asked, 3A? Or what I asked to her. Yeah, how will she know that you are the passenger going to be in 3A or that seat? How will she guess that? Anyway, perhaps you are not able to visualize it. I asked her with wonder. I, I, that's what I told you. you. Your number one expression of the entity is wonder. That you have to cultivate. It is not only my opinion, all topmost researchers in originality, they have all lied in interviewing topmost people in the world. They said wonder is the number one and the only one expression of a creative, sensitive mind. Because all other emotions are with everybody. Love, it is so easily possible. Hatred, easily possible. Aggression, easily possible. Worry, easily possible. Anxiety, easily possible. Tension, easily possible. But wonder, you cannot define how wonder happens. You cannot even identify the trigger. What, what in something triggers wonder in you? If you go to Everest, you may say, or Himalayas, you may say, oh, huge mountain ranges, etc., etc., etc. Then what about the people they are already living there? They have no wonder. Mm -hmm. So, I wondered, you know what I wondered? How could she know that I was coming to see 3A? She was sitting in 3B. I did not uh, show anything. I was just looking. I was just looking at the seats uh, written on the top of that whatever. 1 ABC, 2 ABC, 3 ABC. I was going on seeing that this 3 ABC. And uh, even before uh, am I completely sitting on the seat, I asked her, how did you know that I was coming to 3A? That was my question. Then she said, uh, from the way you, you were looking at it. I said, I, was lo I looked at the many other things, but how, how did you notice it? So you must be uh, 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 highly capable. You are good at visualizing. You are, you, are, you, are, uh, you are a highly observant person. I said that conclusion. And she said, yes. I asked her, what are you doing? I am a graphic designer. And uh, she was already working somewhere. She was going for an interview in a top company in Delhi. And uh, from that point till the uh, till the plane landed and reached the parking center, I was giving her all ideas about graphics. I asked her to show the portfolio because she was going for an interview. She opened the laptop and showed everything and I gave my review and comments on every one of them and suggested corrections which she was surprised about because she said even her guide was not able to say that. 
and all kinds of dialogues, almost one hour plus. Continuously, I was giving her all the directions, and in between, I said, I am giving all these things. I will never see you again. I don't know who you are, nothing. Because this is the way I am. I, and I told her that is the way you also should be. And uh, there also in Delhi airport also, uh, it was an indigo flight. <laughs> I waited to get the signature of the pirates. And she left. And I reached the galley and I saw her waiting there for me. And uh, she told me, I immensely thank you like this. I will never forget this in my life. I am immensely grateful. And I told her what, you know. I say, I told her, I did not see you and I did not talk to you anything. Forget about that. Great. And I just walked out. So what I'm telling is, uh, you, that is the lack of self-importance. I give in that one hour uh, almost the essence of what I have been telling you. She is nobody. To, lay, to tell you the fact, she was, of course, I am a poet and I am a sensitive writer, a theater director, etc. I can really appreciate the beauty of a female. Let me tell you, she was not even a so called beautiful female. Of course, and the face is covered, <laughs> the mask and the plus uh, what you call, uh, there's, there's an indica provides a mask as well as a screen. Of course, we cannot look up because you are sitting my side. So, that is the evidence of uh, absolute lack of self importance, Rina. Yes. So, whatever I talk, whatever I talk are things that I do. So, uh, 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 this is, uh, the, for example, Ankit. I actually, I would never have thought of inviting Ankit. Ankit is also a wonderful guy. I understood it. Just sir, tell me, sir. Dialogue from him. I was just uh, sitting in my talk to maybe uh, for about three minutes to him. But I have a way to ask critical questions. And he is directing, uh, uh, what to call, the um, startup of uh, uh, some 15, 20, whatever people. He is in charge of that. And he told me that some people are not at all interested, they are not motivated, they have started an enterprise, etc. But I have to, I call them and I tell them, I inspire them. That's what I do most of the time. They are not interested, but I see that I will call them and I inspire them. Then I realize what is wrong. He doesn't have to do that at all. And uh, at that time, I decided that uh, I would invite him. <coughs> that is that lack of self importance. That is the evidence of that love. Who are those entrepreneurs and some unknown people in Bihar? Mm, definitely. Sir. Not only unknown, careless people. They all want the money from the government uh, because the Bihar government is doing a lot of entrepreneurial uh, assistance and, uh, and all that. Most of them are there maybe to get the money, you don't know. But Angit will not look at that. Whether whatever it is, this is the way I deal. I would like to see them successful. I would like to see them successful and they don't want to. <laughs> I was often surprised. So that is your quality. Mm. But sir, ultimately helping me and helping the startup also. That is the way and of the uh, lack of self-importance. I was saying, sir, that... Uh, it's important that Richard Feynman, I don't know, I think Richard Feynman, he traveled 300 miles just to meet a boy and give him some guidelines. It is the lack of self-importance that enables you to sit down at 2 o'clock in the night and uh, and listen to this program or two o'clock night and sit down and study a lot of things people think that oh this is a poor guy he cannot sit as i told you the uh, self uh, uh, what you call the so-called ordinary people uh, you will be surprised that they have great self-importance
as the but uh, to, for information some of the really powerful people in police positions uh, ig or police or dsp or uh, sp or uh, university process or senior managers or senior government officers uh, uh, are surprisingly how no self importance at all but in general great majority of the so called ordinary people are uh, what is called uh, completely corrupt to self importance Yeah, we need. Hello. Huh? Sir, uh, I mean, the departments are responding. I think you are not hearing. I see. Oh, I am sorry. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But what? Oh, thank you, Vinay, for informing me that you okay. could hear what I said. Ah, we can, we can hear that. Oh, I see. Sorry, sorry. Oh, I am sorry. But, uh, Oh, I'm sorry because uh, Mandra has uh, classes, so uh, so I reduced the laptop volume and connected this thing so that only I can hear. Okay. Oh, what did you, anybody say? Come on, let us answer that and close it down. Yeah. One of the things I think Parvati had uh, responded to your question, sir, <coughs> that yeah. the girl, uh, you asked the girl, how did you know you were sitting in three A? And then Ankit Ji was also talking about his experience and feedback. No, no, once again, once again, I could not hear that. That the ear, earphone for dropped out. Once again. So I think it was Parvati who had actually uh, responded to a question. What do you think I said to that girl? Mm. So she said that uh, you asked her about how did you know I was sitting in 3A? <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, wonderful. Mm. Wow. Then I think Ankit Ji was also uh, responding to the feedback about yeah. the people and how you how he used to interact with them yeah. despite their disinterest. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Shall I share my experience a little bit? Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. yeah sir. sir, I was saying that uh, uh, while mentoring these startups, I am learning a lot. I have to read a lot to mentor them. But the beauty is that for my last two and a half year hard work has resulted in seven startups that are funded by the government of Bihar. They have got 10 lakhs initial seed funding and probably all of them will get the second round of 20 lakhs rupees also. And just yesterday out of the five. Okay, uh, quite possible there might be some problem. Okay. And yesterday I found three more startups that could be funded after mentoring. So it means the things are really working for me. The hard work is really paying me now. Yeah, so great, sir. Great. Great. Congratulations. Great. Yes, great doing. And this is a doing which I don't think it will get easily recognized also. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Because I am not getting any credit or monetary reward for this. Yeah, that is so, of course. No problem, sir. Self satisfaction. It's very easy to become apathetic without knowing it. Mm -hmm. And the environment is that way. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, seven of them are like oh, wonderful. That is a major success, of course. Sir. Mm -hmm. So, uh, where you uh, benefited, Nitya? You got uh, some of right course, of sir. control over the uh, of driving course. of uh, uh, your possible interaction to the participants. Yes, I'm sure I... you do. You do definitely wonderful there. You could have had some internal blogs uh, in presenting it here. Um, yes, I felt a little bit of um, block as well and uh, uh, like approaching this topic i went from the book to a bigger presentation before and then i cut down into only the mental traps the nine mental traps uh, the the major points only and now i'll have to focus only on the three points out of the nine mental traps and elaborate it so this is kind of uh, putting the correct focus and elaborating 
and getting the right points to the audience sir so and uh, uh, by the by uh, by chance uh, if uh, time remains for the allotted uh, duration you talk about uh, uh, the most related uh, mindset of uh, sensitivity lag huh? yeah because even in general in training in resolution of mental traps you have to focus on rigidity or uh, functional fixedness creative sensitivity or sensitivity lag Femininity trap and self-importance trap. The other mindsets are connected with fear and anxiety and tension. Better don't touch it much because they're all deep-rooted because they're all linked with fear and anxiety. Unless you get a long time training, like two years and all that, then only you can resolve that level of traps. But uh, flexibility in the way to think about the world, uh, flexibility in expressions and responses and ways of working, and developing creative sensitivity by reading or by discourse with uh, discussions with other people and understanding familiarity trap and understanding self-importance trap this all can be consciously uh, attained imbibed and uh, evolved in a, in a great lot of people nitya so okay. um, if at all you want to talk about any other mindsets talk only about uh, uh, flexibility function the need of functional flexibility and the need okay. for uh, sensitivity that creates new understanding that is called creative sensitivity everybody is sensitive to the available not even to the completeness of available but little tips of the iceberg of the available to begin with okay. to be sensitive to the totality of the iceberg and then to create a new understanding out of observations of the totality of the iceberg yes mandra yes sir mandra mandra oyendigil undakkan nokku Oh, you are here. So egoistic is different from this. There are a whole lot of synonymous terms for everything. You know. Egoistic also has its uh, unique uh, expressions. Egoism is mostly expressing one's uh, uh, do relative dominance in a context based on uh, either role position. or knowledge possession or uh, any other attribute and uh, other factors of possession so what is ego if you know the what you call freudian theory id ego and super ego id consists of the instinctual primal forces which uh, drives the child to respond to stress always and uh, the ego is a self developed understanding it is created by oneself about how oh, this is the way i have to be this is the way i must adjust it's a kind of an executive function so uh, so it is all about it is mostly in the context of a uh, uh, role based relating with people i am the person in charge we can say the conventional behaviors of husbands were a little bit egoistic because i am the husband but nothing no they may be critics or people who may not like it but egoistic meaning that that social self becomes uh, dominant i am the manager so you must follow me i am the husband therefore you have to follow me i am the head so you have to do it i am the teacher therefore you have to do it that is egoistic but these are all terms generic terms a highly so called a socially egoistic person may not have any self importance a person who feels like as you said i am the uh, i am really important he may not show any egoism outside perhaps just because of the feeling that if i be egoistic i may be insulted here so anything it is a complex network of uh, interrelationship you know only by looking at a case only by looking at a given situation now we are looking at the theory only 
which we are not much interested. That's why we want to do case studies. Okay. For example, the master samurai, he was a, uh, like I should mention, he was a, he knew that he was the greatest guy in uh, in the land as a samurai. But he did not have any self-importance at all. Nor he had he showed any egoism. Ego and all does not come in the picture of any Saint parable. But anyway, he, he was ready to suspend his self-importance also. That's why he could tolerate the cook. Yeah. Whereas the cook was trying to be egoistic about his uh, knowledge in sword. And he wanted to establish his egoistic role in the society as a samurai. Ankit, we are referring to one of the parables in Zen philosophy, Zen perspective, a parable named the Master Cook, which, uh, which we have begun, uh, just started discussing. We use case, case studies in our interaction. But uh, uh, the most of the cases are uh, uh, more, the highest forms of parables in the highest perspective in the world, called Zen. Then we take some poems and uh, things like that. And look at that Shogun, the supreme most man. man. One unknown, uh, a strange, uh, uh, some samurai is coming and openly challenging before an audience. And uh, 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 he had no problem, no, no egoism, no, and not even a sense of self-importance, uh, doubtful. He was, he openly said, okay, I need 14 days time. The supreme most master in the land is telling to an ordinary looking non unknown samurai that I need 14 days of time. You see? And would what the audience would think? Oh, what if what if this? They are all surprised. They, for a moment, all his reputation is uh, questioned. But he was confident. That is the greatness of him, actually. Yeah, that is the greatness we talked about. He was so convinced. It was not conviction. He was so much in tune with the uh, the supreme being that he is. We use the word great and all that. We talk about Mahatma Gandhi as a great person. He doesn't feel because there is no feeling called feeling great. It is attribution by the other people. And that's the way with all languages. All words are uh, finally attributions only. You do not call yourself Asudi. It is for somebody else to call you. So is the case with almost every word. So that supremely great person, he doesn't need anybody's certificate. He was sure, was able to postpone, able to risk. I don't know whether I asked you a question, why it was a greatly risky decision. I think uh, Anuradha only answered in that discussion. It was a great risk because Publicly, he asked for 14 days. And after 14 days, when he come there, and if this guy does not turn up, people will not know why he asked for 14 days. He was not in a uh, he did not have the familiarity trap. He is an absolutely original being. That regardless of the public uh, uh, suspicion, regardless of the stupid ignorance of this unknown kind of a samurai, he was still ready to give him a chance. For what? 
Is he or his cousin or sister's child or somebody like that? No. That is his greatness. That's an unknown samurai, he will go. But he was ready to be absolutely concerned, regardless of the uh, uh, ridiculous disrespect he was uh, affording at that point of time. Because that was his love. That is the originality of the mind of his. That is the that is the childlike love of his entity. Understand? Yeah. A child loves, as I told you, the child loves the father or the mother, not knowing that it is the father and mother. No. Because child is nothing but a manifestation of love. That is why. That is the kind of greatness I talked about, Ashwati. Not ordinary self-importance. Oh, should I turn off this one? So, all right. You have traveled a long distance. Uh, though we did not complete the journey. But he, how, he, how we traveled, that makes the travel meaningful. Right. <laughs> Whether we reach the destination or not is not uh, that significant a concern. <laughs> Anything else? Any other significant question pending? It can be answered quickly. Yeah. So, uh, is, yes. is self respect also a form of self importance only? No, 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 no not at all. No, self-importance. He think you most people understand this as uh, He thinks about himself as very important. That is a social term. In, um, in that sense, only it is used. You know, in a, in a, in a relationship context. Like uh, uh, when you get the question paper, you can answer five questions out of ten. Okay, or you identify most important questions. Like this. That those five questions are more important vis-a-vis -vis the other five questions. You know, if only five questions, all the five questions are equally important. So uh, importance is uh, it's a relative term. Whereas respect is not a relative term. You respect your father uh, uh, just like that. Respect, respect all the world with respect, S P E C T in English language, they are all connected with vision, 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 seeing. No? Okay? Spectacles, spectacular. Okay? So, respect, that means there is an extra look. You something uh, so called. Uh, uh, normal, you just have a look. If something uh, slightly extraordinary, you look at it again. Respect. So, respect is like that. There is a reflective mode. You have applied some reflection on that. And about the thing you respect, you you treat it in a different way compared to the other thing. Like like the the deity inside your room. You do not keep you do not keep the uh, deity inside the bathroom, for example. You know. Because you expect at it in a different way. Like, whereas importance, import, there is a concept called the import, the import of a word. How much is important in a, from other country? Import, how much it is important? So I have imported more, you have imported less. So importance is always uh, vis a vis the other things. I have more, I am in a more position, I am the senior. I have 20 years of experience, you have only 10 years of experience, so I am more important. That kind of a stand. Who are you to question me? Who are you to criticize me? These are the things. Self-respect would ideally evolve, help you to evolve. Whereas self-importance will put you almost stable. You are already important, then what is there more to pursue?
and importance is the consideration by the others about you and you attribute it by yourself you are assuming that others should treat you importantly but the self respect is there whether others respect you or not you have that respect for you <coughs> with the mere self importance you may insult somebody you may use violent language ugly language indecent language by mere self importance but if you have self respect you will never do that yeah all right so i, I thank ankit for, for uh, accepting the invitation and to be present here uh, and I really uh, thank you sir <laughs> because i have learned a lot of things all right okay that i know you will say the so ankit is uh, an embodiment of tenderness <laughs> right sir right certainly everybody knows what yes sir uh, wonderful guy uh, very good guy Uh, then, thank you ankit sir thank you <laughs> so all right i wish you all a wonderful entry into very reflective meditative sleep looking at uh, re respecting okay let's see what happened today okay bye 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 sir good thank you thank you, thank you. good night bye sir good night good night bye sir 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 Thanks to Deji for the presentation. Thank, thank, uh, thank, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. See you. All the best, Nitya. All the best, Nitya. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Good night.